Hello, survivors, and welcome to Castle of Alchemists. We are playing a tower defense game today. It is an action RPG uh, with a bit of uh, elements that, uh, you know, you get to build your own character however you want. So again, the RPG way, uh, I'll just show you what the character creation or the character, uh, it's called mutation. So every time you level up, you get points and you can put them into different stats like a booby trap damage, weapon damage, um, weight re uh, reduction and uh, things like that. So. And that's the whole RPG element of the game, as well as be able, uh, being able to make your own weapons and uh, traps and things like that, or at least crafting and things like that. But we'll look at all of that at the end of the round. Uh, for now, I just wanted to show you a little bit of the game and how it works. So you can see that uh, as you uh, play more and more, you unlock more and more things. I think uh, we can go and play this one again just to show you guys how it goes and everything that it runs with. Um, do I want to do this one again? Uh, as you can see, it's got the layout of all the floors for us, so we've got to play that. We'll, we'll just go and play this level over here. So we click on deploy level. It does tell us the enemies as well on the top right hand side over here now which is going to give us all of their weaknesses and resistances as well. And normally the loading screen isn't that bad. And it says that they all resist um, fire, but we're going to be playing with fire anyway, because uh, we don't care what their resistances are. We know that the fire deals so much damage anyway. So what we're going to do is these are our traps over here. So if we push number five, you can see we have a flamethrower. So we're going to just set it up right over here. One over there and one over here, which is fantastic. And then we've got these oil, um, what would you call them? These like oil caskets or oil traps. And when we put them over there, that's going to give us that over there. And then we can go and put a little bit of a blade, a saw trap over here. Uh, I think it's going to work really well over there. Maybe we can start putting more of them throughout the entirety of the wave. So now we click next wave and we are now a character that can play uh, in the round. And we can put down a couple of things. We can hop over walls if we want to. But uh, we're just going to chill here and shoot people with our machine gun. Now you do get different weapons as well in the game. And we'll take a look at all of those a little bit later as well. And what you can craft. There is melee as well. You can see we have a sword. If we right click it coats our sword with poison. That's just an upgrade that we've got. And the type of sword we have. But uh, we're not going to be using the sword right now. Because as you can see we don't have a really good one equipped. Alright our number 3 is like a... I don't know how you would describe it. It's a little spider with a, a bomb attached to it and then it lays down clay traps. Again, that's an upgrade that I've put onto it. So there's a, a lot of freedom of builds over here as well as things like that. Like here we, we put down a turret which is then going to focus on shooting everything in its range and that's going to help us defend a little bit better as well. And then if you have a look at the bottom right over there, you see that purple bar that keeps going down. That's the wave timer. And then at the very top in the middle, that is how many lives we have until we lose the round. This is our character's HP. E is a healing vial, so we can get life back if we need to. Or we can just use Q, which is like a huge ass, uh, like a shotgun, I don't know, like a blast wave that deals damage and pretty much kills absolutely everything in its range. So we do have some defenses, quite a lot going on in the game. But uh, they do teach you absolutely everything and you unlock everything slowly and surely every time you beat a new level. So everything that I have unlocked has only become unlocked because I am this far into the run or into the game. And the further you go, the more there is to unlock and the stronger you're going to get as well. But obviously the enemies do get stronger as well. So that's the end of the first wave. We land up going over here. There's four waves in total. We get to dread level. The more dread level you have, I've realized you get a little bit more black uh, resources. I think it's based off of the dread level. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, there are times when I've only been to dread level two and I got less resources. So now we are able to go into another trap building phase, which is great. We get to put more traps out. We're going to go and put some of these up over here 
Uh, we're going to put them closer to where they spawn, which is going to help us kill them a bit quicker. And uh, that's going to just give us a thinner wave as they are spawning as well. So do that over there. We can put a, another one of these uh, fire traps, uh, maybe down over here. That's perfect. And put some oil down over there. Fantastic. So the oil burns and then the enemies walk into that burning oil. And even though they're resistant to the oil, they still take so much damage from it. So there we go. You can see they are dying very, very quickly. It's mostly me that does the damage and the enemies do tend to chase you as well. So uh, as you can see there, we put down the oil, oil goes on fire and it's just a really, really cool game. We've spent about two hours in game already and we only received the game on Thursday or Friday. I mean, I play a lot of games. So having two hours in a short period of time is actually amazing on, uh, you know, to my standards. <laughs> uh, not that I have all day, every day to play just games, so there is that. I don't know, it's just that, that some of the waves are really, really difficult and you can lose the wave. Unfortunately, if you do lose the wave, you don't really go home with anything, so you do need to make sure that you win a wave, uh, the, the actual round, not the waves, the entire level uh, to get resources and things like that to then get upgrades for your crafting and things like that. Alright, so these enemies are actually weak to acid, so I'm going to land up putting acid pools down. I'll show you what those are after this uh, round and we'll put some acid ceiling traps down, sort of similar to the ones that we put that are shooting the turrets. Um, and that's going to just give us a little bit more damage on these types of enemies because they are apparently resistant. I mean, they are weak to acid. So yes, they resist fire, but as you can see, fire does deal a whack of damage to them and it just makes it a lot easier if you use the right weaknesses and resistances obviously you know that's how normal games are played you look at the resistances and weaknesses and you're like okay we gotta go and get ourselves uh, some acid instead of using fire but the fire just deals way too much damage to just ignore it like that so let's put that down over there they are starting to get close to us we don't want to lose any lives we are close to the end time wise so we just need to survive that a little bit longer. The cold traps cause bleeding and slowing as well. And that's going to help us survive as well. If we have to, we do have our queue as a lost resort. Uh, you do get one every single round as well. Uh, like one inventory of it. And then you are able to use it to just deal that amount of damage. To just protect yourself that bit further. I forgot that we wanted to put a whole lot of saw traps over here, so we got to do that as well. But before that, we're going to put the acid down. Uh, I think I, I should have put them... Was there space to put three? No, there's not. Okay, that's unfortunate. We should have maybe put them here instead then. So one acid's going to chill over here on the stairs. We're going to put another one. Uh, we've got the two over there. That's fine. And then we want to get some more saw blades in here. Just rotate them, put them in over here. And that's going to help us with the final defense. We can probably just put as many as we want down there. I don't know if that's going to help much or not. But uh, you know who who really... Uh, it sounds like it's a little fun place to put a whole bunch of these. Alright, and then they obviously started on the side where we don't put the poison. So that's just fantastic. You'll see the acid run down. It's kind of like a, just a pool. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't remember the cooldown of the acid. So once it is finished and the enemies die, or, you know, now they go, they activated the other one. But they kind of have to run into it for it to do damage to them. Otherwise, it doesn't really do anything. Alright, but yeah, we got the acid pool right there. So that's going to help us. I think we need more of them in the future. Maybe the next final wave will do more. Alright, and then each level has... I don't know how the time works for them. It would be nice if it let you know how long the, the average of the waves take. Um, just so you get a good idea of how much time you're going to be spending on that level. 
but it doesn't really matter. I mean, even if it's like a 15 minute level every so often, uh, it really, really is fun. But we've got some uh, <laughs> standard bearers over there. We need to just kill them. All bearers, I guess, like an aura character or enemy that buffs the, ally, uh, the allied enemies and makes them move faster or have armor and things like that. So you do have to try and kill them a bit quicker than the others usually. But uh, again, still in a very good spot. You can see they're not really getting through uh, as far as they were in the round before. Alright, let's go. Perfect. Throw a bomb at them. Again, everything in this game is customizable. So even the bombs... Uh, that we're throwing at the enemies have been upgraded by me. You do get four different tiers of weapons and crafting and everything like that. So sometimes you do have to just keep crafting over and over again until you get the higher tiers, which is your general, you know, RPG kind of crafting thing in most games. So we'll, we'll have a look at all of that though in a couple of minutes once we reach the end of this. So this is the final wave it looks like. Hopefully we can do some decent work over here without getting into a lot of trouble. But it seems to have been some smooth sailing the rest of the run. I do think this, what was this, wave 3 only? So we still got one more wave after this. But I do think we need either more acid pools or more fire pools. The thing is, even though they're resistant to the fire, uh, the fire just deals so much damage. So it's just that much easier to get rid of things. So even though they resist it, because it deals so much damage, it just gets rid of them so much quicker. Maybe there's an acid trap as well that I haven't looked into yet either. Because we do have poison sparks, but the poison sparks is not their weakness. Alright, so so far it's taken nine and a half minutes. You can see we didn't get the dread level over there, and we did in fact get less resources. So dread level does make your resources go up or down, but that's okay. We're still in a very good spot over here. So we can actually put these over here. That's fine. We're going to put more acid down. Uh, maybe we can put it over here. That's going to be fine. And we're just going to shower this place with acid now. That's going to be perfect. All right, final wave. Let's go through it and see what happens. We can just throw our little spider out at the moment. And look at where they spawn, it is the Shining Skull on the map, and we can just focus that corner in the very beginning as well. Try and kill as much as we can from there. There is another weapon that actually uh, really, really helps with large groups of enemies, so I might go back to that melee weapon. Uh, melee weapon, by the way, not ranged weapon, but what happens is when you right-click with that uh, melee weapon, you have this massive AoE ground slam. And it just deals so much damage at one shots like practically everything so very very strong weapon we might go back to it but uh, you know waiting is a thing in this game so uh, when i mean by weight i mean how heavy your character is and how much you can carry into the stage so you do have to kind of keep that in mind as well uh, with how you build your character and all the stuff that you do equip to them I think we're okay. We still got the acid over here as well. So hopefully we don't activate it. That's great. We didn't we need to get rid of these guys. They just making it through. However, even though they are making it through, they haven't activated these acid traps this side, which is great because that's a better defense for us. Alright, beautiful. We just see them all get melted by that acid. That's just great. And then there are challenges on each map. Uh, I don't know if I can... No, I can't show you just yet, but we'll show you when we finish the round. Um, that each map has different challenges and you have to do certain things throughout the game and all it does is it gives you more resources 
uh, when you finish the challenges. I don't know if you can farm resources just by finishing the same round over and over again. I haven't really spent enough time in it to really have a look at that, but it is something that I think you might be able to do. Uh, level wise, you get more XP from finishing the level that you've never done before compared to just redoing the same level over and over again. At least that's what I've experienced because uh, I, I did struggle uh, like a really long time on one of the levels. I uh, managed to get through it when I changed my strategy up a bit and uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it does make it a lot easier if you use the right equipment and traps and things like that. So uh, I had a look at the weaknesses and resistances and I managed to finish it off a lot easier than I did the first time I tried it. And uh, it's a bit of a challenging game, it can be very difficult. I know I'm making it look really easy, but I am cheesing this quite a bit. Uh, however, anyone can do what I'm doing, so maybe it's not really cheesing too much. It's just taking advantage of the towers that you have and the ones that are really, really strong. Alright, so I think this is the last enemy. Uh, yeah, looks like he's a, a mini boss or something. But he's dead, actually there were two of them, because I just realized how he exploded. We killed one earlier without even realizing it. Alright, so it took us 13 and a half minutes. We killed 39,000. Uh, we needed 40,000 kills to get the fourth skull. Again, I have no idea what that does yet, but here's the challenges. So we had to deal damage with ranged weapons. Uh, kill 120 invaders with acid. We only did 106. The numbers at the bottom is the resources that you gain from doing those challenges. Uh, dual mix combo 10 times. I don't know what that means. It's probably deal fire and poison damage and deal the damage with turrets and I only did ten, nine and a half thousand. But now we've unlocked a gas flask, a mortar tower and a spark trap serrated. So let's go and show you guys what all of that is. Um, I was actually told by the developers of the game when they asked me to take a look at the game to try and finish the area two, which is what I'm currently on, because that's when you go and you unlock some of the best uh, uh, crafting in the game is after area two. So we're nearly there, um, but it takes a bit of time, obviously. Uh, let's go to the workshop. This is where you see all your traps and your towers. So the towers, we didn't really get a, t a look at them, but some levels have a mount that allows you to build your towers. Uh, each trap has different sub uh, categories so you know as I was doing the oil trap on the floor that's because it is a sprinkler trap oil and then it is flammable whereas if I did this one over here it just slows down the enemies it isn't flammable we've got the spark traps which are these now we've got bleed and poison I use the poison one but we never use them that run you get flamethrower trap or furnace trap which you saw me using but there are three others there is the ceiling trap, the mini cannon is the one I've been using, but there are electricity ones as well. And then there's a barricade, which we never used, but there are better barricades we still need to unlock. Uh, then after that, we got the mutation again. Uh, we just leveled, so we are going to put more into booby traps, one point over there. But this is the crafting over here. So this lets you change what each thing does so uh, our Q, our bomb number one ability that we we're using there you can let it blind enemies as well but you can see the damage goes down to 80 to 100 uh, 50 or 40 to 50 if it stuns enemies or we've got the deal massive damage which is the one that we like to do because you know who doesn't like damage uh, this one is gas we haven't really looked at that there's fire uh, plus marked to enemies. I'm guessing marked makes them take more damage and uh, So there are quite a couple of things. There's a strong poison over there chill on explosion uh, Cloud that applies the poison. There's the clockwork that we've got. You can make him deal acid leave burning oil uh, What does this one do walking clockwork that targets enemies and explodes shooting around till it reaches at the target or just one that explodes which is the one that i've got it explodes into coal traps and that exploding into coal traps uh you know kind of let me show you what happens so if we go to our equipment uh that's over there sorry very silly of me we could have just gone to uh, over here so you see we've got a weight um you, you can change your equipment over here uh, you know changing your weight obviously uh, we can't 
that doesn't let us we don't have enough weight to put that weapon in but uh, you get different things over here that you can equip and you need to look at it and then when you craft things that color change so obviously we've got the alchemist great sword tier four so we got an extra crushing blow we got increased damage and we also got increased core capacity and the damage is then increased as well because the tier is higher whereas if we look at our different weapons we've got a blunderbuss tier three here that deals a whack ton of damage but it's only got one magazine so it shoots once and then you have to reload I like the half fire rate weapons so I'm using the repeater crossbow I do have a minigun which is better but I still need to up my weight a bit more because it does have a higher weight and I cannot equip it just yet so that is the game guys I hope you enjoyed it I hope I uh, you know, you can go and take a look at the demo. It is down in uh, the link. We've got a link down in the description for the Steam store page. There is a demo available if you want to try the game out yourself. But I do recommend giving it a buy. It is a really, really good, good game. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And always remember, keep safe survivors. Until next time. Cheers.